Hey folks, and welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today, we've got something pretty exciting. We have the pocket meter. This was sent to me by Pocket, and all they asked is that I make a video about it. If you're curious about their other products, such as the Pocket Pro, I have a link to that video right here in this upper right-hand corner, where we go through all the settings in the app and everything like that. So some of this will be redundant. I'm also very curious on how the app manages being linked with multiple devices and how that interfaces. So we will be switching kind of back and forth between between the Pocket Meter and the Pocket Pro. Let's go ahead and just jump right in. Something that they let you know right off the bat in the app is that this is only rated for 60 volts. So this is just a low volt meter. It is also incredibly tiny. I don't know of how well that translates over a camera, but for reference, it's about one nine volt battery tall and wide and in depth. It's very, very small. And it just has these leads that pop out like that, pretty cool. And then they just go ahead and and shrink back in, you clip them in and you're good to go. So this is a very unique, very cool product and I'm very excited to go over it with you all today. So let's go ahead and hop in the app and then we'll go into some measurements, kind of like our home screen, our home base. Our Pocket Pro is already linked up and then we have the Pocket Meter. Channel two defaults to a yellow trace, which I'm not a big fan of on a screen like this, but luckily we can go into settings. We can actually edit our trace color to anything that we would like on the color wheel. Let's do something kind of neon. We need something the opposite of red, so we have good contrast. It's kind of like a turquoise. Hope that works. Let's go ahead and hop into measure. We'll start with our multimeter. Down here at the bottom, we can see that we have two devices. We have our Pocket Pro and our Pocket Meter. If I want, I can turn off my Pocket Pro and just focus on my Pocket Meter. We can see our Pocket Meter is highlighted in the color that we've selected for our trace. Which will be a good reminder for when we go into the oscilloscope function. And my Pocket Pro is now in the off position. Something that I can do is go over to Pocket Pro. I can turn it on and go back over to my Pocket meter and then you can see my pocket pros measurements will still show up down here in this black bar and it's highlighted in turquoise letting me know that my pocket meter is the one selected for the main screen we can also go over to mode and we can see there's no selector on the pocket meter itself there's no selector switch like there would be on the pocket pro it just defaults to everything that you have available to you and then something that we can take note of is if we go to current, switch to current mode, At warning, attempt to measure current greater than two amps may cause damage to your pocket meter. They have that warning as well up here in the left hand corner. We want to remember 60 volts and two amps are the limits for this guy. Even though it's so small, it is still fused. Look at that. They hook you up with a little tiny, I thought it was an SD card at first. They do hook you up with a fuse. If you accidentally do mess up, you should be protected by the fuse, which I thought was still just great. Let's go ahead and pop into a voltage DC measurement. Take a measurement of our battery here. Great. Now something we can do, just like with our Pocket Pro, is I can hold my measurement like that. I can go ahead and save it. And then that is now stored in my history. Okay, this is also nice. In our history, under our details, because if we go back, we can see there is a bunch of stored measurements in here from my Pocket Pro. And if I go to the little closer look icon here, it's gonna tell me the channel, the pocket, and the trace color, which is really nice so that way you have that labeling so you know which measurement you took with which instrument that's a nice little detail let's hop into voltage AC Twenty four point two volts AC. Man, this is so cool. Let's do a resistive measurement. Lead polarity is something I talk about here occasionally. A lead polarity is you have your red lead and your black lead. If you're not too familiar with working with multimeters, red's going to be for positive, black's for negative. When you're measuring AC, voltage and current switches from positive to negative. So your lead polarity isn't critical. You can use either lead for your hot or your neutral or, or whatever. We are in a resistive measurement. Let's see if we can hold our max and go ahead 
and swap over. I do like these leads. This is such a creative company. Very cool. And it's showing resistance values to the hundredth place, which I think is really interesting. Temperature. We can do Celsius or Fahrenheit, and then we can do calibration, just like our Pocket Pro. This actually has so many of the same features as the Pocket Pro, which is incredible for it being so much smaller. Capacitance is not a measurement that we can do with this, but we can do our diodes. Remember, we always check our diodes in both directions. Hmm. One. I don't see. Okay, so one. I'll have to reference the manual for what that means because one is not a voltage drop that we would normally expect to see in a diode test. And then we have continuity. For continuity on the Pocket Pro, a tone will be produced in the meter and your phone or tablet. For the Pocket Meter, a tone is only produced through the app. So out of your phone or tablet, not the device itself. So something to keep in mind. Let's check out the oscilloscope on this little guy and how this is gonna work. For pocket meter, we've got our teal trace. I'm curious if you can see both traces at the same time. And it doesn't look like you can. It looks like when we're in oscilloscope and we have more than one paired, we can see one or the other. So right now I just have a teal trace. Let's go to mode, let's see our voltage five volts, let's do one millisecond. And then for our scaling, something I forgot to go over for the Pocket Pro. So let's say I have five volts for my, my scaling, right? That should mean that every block that we have is in five volt increments. Let's go ahead and bring over this little guy here. For those of you not too used to using an oscilloscope, you use it essentially just like a voltmeter. This is a pulse width modulated controller setup here, and I want to see the waveform of the output. I can put my leads here. We wanna make sure that this little wheel down here, this is a button, so we can press it. We want that button spinning. Basically, it took a snapshot. Let's see if I can go into mode and if I can adjust so I can see my waveform better. The oscilloscope, sometimes you do have to mess around with. You want to see that wheel spinning. It looks like our trigger functions are different. It is somewhat limited compared to our Pocket Pro. Can we save that captured? Okay, so we save that. There's our captured wave. The oscilloscope wave saved measurements are in here. Here's your save and here's your history button. Let's try the data logger and see what that looks like. Data logger should be similar to the scope but it should just be running data logger is going to be for like long-term kind of measurements basically you're monitoring something so there's not a lot of detail in it see how we can't see the individual waves we're just looking at data over time what if we switch over to the pocket the reason why we can't see that much detail is because our divisions see what happens when we change our voltage. If we were looking for changes in controls, something like this would be handy. Turning down the speed of the motor. We could see that reflected on our data logger. I'm gonna try to bring it to like basically a dead stop. Okay, the motor's at a dead stop. So we can see our voltage has just dropped off and now the motor is gonna be spinning in the opposite direction. Let's see if we don't do fit. Hmm. Let's go back over to the pocket meter and see how it handles data logging. Changes there. You can see the change in speed. And then it looks like our data logger, you know, it's just going to continue to rise in our seconds per division as it tries to fit everything on the screen. Change the speed of the motor again. So that is the pocket meter. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Wow, one year data logging. <laughs> Diode check, less than 1.5 volts, that's all it says. So if we're getting a one, I assume that means it's good. Please like, subscribe, share the video, ring the bell, do what you gotta do. Helps me make more content like this. I hope this was helpful to everybody. Thank you for joining me in another adventure in the garage, and I'll check y'all on the next one.